Welcome back to CSUN's Organic Chemistry Series. My name is Alex Mantinona, and today we're going to go over Chem 333's third experiment, which is on simple distillations. So simple distillations are used to essentially separate things out that are more volatile. So essentially, if you have a liquid um, compound that you want to get out, you're essentially going to boil it and then recondense it out. And by doing so, you actually purify your product. Uh, today, we're actually only going to focus on the simple distillation of alpha priming using a Hickman distill head. So the first part of your experiment that it says in your lab manual, you'll be skipping uh, ahead to that part. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment that we're going to need to use. Okay, so here is pretty much all the equipment that we're going to use today. So the first thing that you're going to need is a conical vial. So right here I have a three milliliter conical vial. You can notice the little cone shape at the bottom. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need is your Hickman distill head. So this distill head you'll notice has a little bulge in the middle of it which is actually a moat which you can collect uh, distilling liquid from. Okay, the next thing you'll need is a glass or a rubber thermometer adapter. Today I'm going to show you with the rubber thermometer adapter. Uh, you, optional, but uh, you may want to avoid these today, is either a Keck clip or a cap with a hole with an O-ring. So you know this, this little rubber ring that I have right here. Uh, you will also need a thermometer a long stem pipette, uh, a pasture pipette bulb, uh, aluminum foil will definitely help you out and you only need a small piece about this big, and then some vacuum grease. And your vacuum grease may be in a syringe that says grease on it. Now this is the equipment that we're gonna need uh, today. Now for your distillation, you're gonna place your alpha pining in the conical vial with a boiling chip that I have right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it in right now. Alternatively, you can use a spin vane. And then you're going to connect this with your Hickman distill head. And to do so, you're going to just take the smallest amount of grease. So you see the amount I have right here? I'm just going to briefly touch it. Uh, even this might be a little excessive. But then I'm going to go ahead and put it on and twist it. And by twisting it, I've now spread the grease around and created a fairly good seal. Now you can connect the two of these and clamp them together with the cap clip or with the uh, cap with a hole with the uh, rubber o-ring. However, since we're going fairly hot, we might want to avoid using these two things just because uh, the plastic might melt. So sometimes uh, when we're going uh, fairly hot, we're just going to be careful. We're going to put these two firmly together with grease and we're not going to uh, attach them with anything that might potentially melt. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up our reaction. So we have our two glass pieces connected together and I'm going to go ahead and place them firmly into our sand bath and immediately I'm going to clap them together. So I'm going to go ahead and lower this down just a tiny bit and I'm going to clamp the glass pieces and make sure it's nice and stable. All right, and that's right over my sand bath. Now you'll notice that my conical vial, my Hickman distill head, uh, the conical vial is at least, you know, about a centimeter or two inside of the sand bath. So that's to ensure good heat transfer. However, we're gonna wanna add a little bit of aluminum foil around it up to the neck, just to this part. We don't wanna actually get the bulge, but we probably wanna uh, cover at least to this part. And the reason why is that uh, when vapors are rising, we want to actually trap the heat down here and when they get up here where it's going to be a little bit cooler, they should just recondense and fall back down. So we'll take our aluminum foil and I'm going to go ahead and just rip it a little bit. And I'm just going to give the conical vial a nice little aluminum coat. And again, notice that the aluminum isn't covering the bulge. That's the, that's the bulge where the moat's going to be and we're actually gonna cover the neck between the two pieces to make sure that uh, condensation doesn't get stuck in there. Okay, after we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and attach our uh, thermometer into uh, the setup. 
So the way we're going to do that is taking our rubber thermometer adapter. We're going to take our rubber thermometer adapter and then we're going to insert it with the whole side facing down into our thermometer. So we're going to go ahead and push it and gently twist it. If the thermometer is too thick, you can always put a little a small amount of water just to lubricate it. And you'll just go ahead and insert it and push it right in. Now you can go ahead and rest that on top. Now the, the best place for this thermometer bulb to be is right up that neckline. So pretty much right where we ended up covering in the with the aluminum foil, that's where we want the thermometer bulb. So if you see I insert it right now, it's going a little too deep. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen that back down to a point where it's sitting right where we want to be. So it's gonna sit right about there. All right, so you can just make it out. I'll go ahead and push it just half a centimeter down and it's sitting right there. Now we don't want it just laying down like that because it might fall. So we'll go ahead and get our three prong clamp around it and hopefully that'll hold just right for us. All right. So now we have our, uh, we have a fairly good seal of vapor. It's not the best. We don't want it to be completely constricted. We want it so that most of the vapors are getting trapped so the, the rubber thermometer can, uh, adapter can do it, but a glass thermometer adapter can do it as well. But we want it enough to where it traps most of the vapor, but still if there's an excess buildup of pressure, it's not going to create a little mini bomb. So just enough that it, it leaks out. And this essentially is our setup. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is show you how to extract liquid from the moat around here. So after you've heated up your sample to the correct amount, which is probably going to be, you know, about 15 degrees higher than the boiling point of alpha piney, uh, it's going to collect in here. And the way you're actually going to see it uh, and you're going to collect it is by essentially just removing the stopper, just open it up to the side a little bit. You're going to take your long pipette and you'll stick it in and you'll just go ahead and extract the liquid just like that. You'll pull it out, you will take a vial that you've already weighed out, and then you'll simply transfer the liquid into the vial. Now one thing we want to focus on uh, when you're doing this is uh, beforehand, please make sure you don't clean the inside of this with water or acetone, or if you do, make sure you heat it up before to evaporate the solvents out, or of course, you know, take a paper towel and dry it so you don't have liquids mixing in here, which is a very common problem and will throw off your... Alright, so welcome to the finale of distillation. Uh, we just want to wish you good luck on your experiment. A few final notes, just like I mentioned in the previous section, please, if you wash your stuff out with uh, acetone or water, to make sure it is completely dry. So take a paper towel in there, heat it up for a little bit, make sure that all the solvent is off of your glassware, else your product is not gonna turn out uh, pure at all. It'll mix in with other solvents and you'll get a very bad uh, purity grade. Now, on top of that, uh, for your heating sample, you always want to go about 15, 20 degrees higher than the boiling point of whatever you're doing. So in this case, you know, alpha is around 150, 155, so you might want to go a little higher than that. Now in other distillations, please use a keck clip or a ring with a, a, a hole in it and a rubber o-ring. But in this case, we're going to be just a little careful. We're going to ease up on it. And we're not going to go ahead and, and cap it just because the plastic will melt and, you know, that's a bit of a pain uh, to deal with. So, uh, from all of us here at California State University Northridge, we would like to wish you good luck. If you have any questions, ask your instructor, ask your lab instructor, uh, go to office hours or, of course, you know, uh, communicate with other students and maybe they can help you out. And we will catch you next time.